Good Greek wives stay in the attic. By S.M. Dotson. With the title, Good Greek Wives Stay in the Attic, someone familiar with classics or ancient geography might think I'm alluding to the region of Attica, containing the great city of Athens. This is only partially the case. I instead want you to think of the architecture of the home. Many ancient Greek homes were similar in that the house would have a second floor. In the classical Greek home, the second floor often looked up into the exposed slope of the rooftop. Many peoples in many places are familiar with this kind of home. When I was very young, my mother read the series of books written by Laura Ingalls Wilder, a narrative of prairie life. I remember they had a cabin which had a second floor, more like an exposed attic and a ladder which led up to it. The children huddled together in the cold, in the location of the home which captures the most heat. Heat rises. In the classical Greek home, the attic was not only the sleeping quarters, but also often referenced as the woman's quarters. This is where the good Athenian wife would spend most of her day. As a result of the lack of sunlight, the good Attic wife had porcelain white skin, while the man was often depicted as dark or tan. The good Attic wife was not seen at the marketplace. But she spent her time with her domestic slaves spinning thread, mainly from wool, and weaving fabric. She might go to a nearby rural spring to bring back water with her domestic slaves. Even the evil witch Circe in the Odyssey was found weaving on her loom like a spider building a web. By rapidly weaving her thread back and forth across her loom, Circe's magic was pharmaceutical-based, by the way, Pharma. and so would be the magic of a devious wife. In a documented court case from ancient Athens, a woman was tried for giving a man what she thought was a love potion, but instead was poison. <gasps> she was, of course, not allowed to speak for herself in court. A male relative often performed the task for a sister, wife, or mother. Looking further at the architecture of the classical Greek home, you will see the standard atrium, a courtyard with walls but no ceiling exposed to the beautiful Mediterranean sky. With this design, the good attic wife could get plenty of air and light without being seen by other men. She would probably avoid too much sunlight if she wanted to maintain her white-armed appearance. Perhaps she would cover herself when necessary to avoid the burning gaze of Helios, the sun god. Another man, by the way. The Romans did this with their famous Vestal Virgins. The sacred maidens lived behind highly secure walls in the symbolic center of the city. You could hear them sing and play from the outside, but you could not steal away their state assets. If you did, as you can guess, you would be executed. <laughs> Within preserved classical Greek court arguments, we can see a Greek wife lure her lover to her own home when the husband was out of the house. This shows that it was perhaps less obvious to have the secret lover visit the woman 
rather than risking the proper attic wife scene roaming around the city unattended. Which would be quite the red flag, so to speak. I once won an ancient Greek-style mock trial at the University of Missouri by making an argument, part of which explained why I would honorably visit local Athenian prostitutes rather than dirty myself with my enemy's wife. You have to be a little familiar with classical Athenian culture to understand why that argument would work. The second floor, as the women's quarters, is highly significant for functional reasons. First, the man of the house could have other men visit on the main floor, which also connected to the courtyard, and it was expected that all the females stay upstairs while another man visits. Historians, of course, do not believe this rule was absolute. Second, there were references to locks on the door which can prevent escape and access to the women's quarters. In modern times, we often have either multiple accesses to the second floor, or often a stairway which is open at the top and difficult to block. Similarly, we often have a large yard, but our fences do not prevent penetration, nor conversation, or eye contact between your non-attic wife and a wandering man. The classical Athenian man had the advantage of marrying, often in his thirties, to a wife who was much younger. It seems they wanted the purity of their wives safe and secure. Uh, men often wanted babies from their young wife, and this might bring her own death quite early. The male Athenian citizen would then require a fresh attic wife. An attic wife would be expected to live among the children produced by her older husband and the female slaves under the legally recognized institution of the man of the household breeding with one or more of his female slaves, which produced more slaves, not legitimate Athenian citizens. Only the Attic wife could do that. In retrospect, perhaps the wife of the household was an honorable enough position, and perhaps it was better in some cases to not be the main target of her husband's affections. With some marriages, this might be helpful. Imagine, the husband comes home drunk and calls for his wife. The wife then sends down a female slave and goes back to bed. Good Greek wives stay in the attic. By S. M. Dotson. Please subscribe to Ancient Light and like the video below or leave a comment. Each interaction helps us reach a, a larger audience. Thanks for tuning in.